Hey guys, this is Einar. Welcome to your 19th tutorial in basic statistics in Excel. Uh, today we're going to develop some of the stuff we did in our last tutorial about percentiles, because today we're talking about quartiles. Now, what is the difference? Well, if we look here at the equation for percentiles, uh, we can see that we're actually moving on a continuous scale, right? We can say we want the first percentile, or we want the 1.7th percentile, or the 5th percentile, etc. We can just fill in the percentile we want instead of P there. In the case of quartiles, uh, as the name may suggest, we're actually looking for 25% um, uh, and 50% and 75%. So we, we're not looking for a continuous, we're looking, not looking on a continuous scale. Uh, on the other hand, we can actually use the, the formula for the percentile because the 25th percentile, when we are 25% into our material, is the same thing as... Uh, the quartile when we are 25% into the material. And so the reason I'm, I'm using the same formula here is because I want you to realize that relationship that percentiles and quartiles and even the median as we see are related to each other. Um, and that's one of the most valuable lessons you can have from this tutorial. But we're moving on. We're actually going to calculate this. So we need our P. As we're looking for the first quartile, we're looking for the 25th percentile. Our N is equal to the sum of our frequencies. And if we use this table, we get 25. X0 is the lower class limit of the class with our, where our uh, quartile is located. So let's find the 25th percent. Well, it's right there in the first class. And the lower class limit for this is 9.5. If you're confused about some of this stuff, check out our earlier tutorials. N0 is the number of observations up to the class we're looking at. And this, the case, it's going to be 0 because we're in the first class and there are no frequencies outside of our frequency table. So we just write 0 there. N1 is the frequency up to and including the class we're looking at. So it's going to be the cumulative frequency of 8. So we write 8 there. Our class width, well, it's the upper class limit minus the lower class limit. So we write is equal to 15.5 minus our lower class limit, which is 9.5. And we get a class width of 6. Okay, excellent. So now we can start calculating this uh, formula right here. And we're going to get right to it. First, we're going to do this manually. Equal to x0 plus three parentheses we're going to go p multiplied p multiplied by n close the parentheses and divide this by 100 close that parentheses and we go minus n0 which is zero in this case so it's not going to affect the equation or anything divided by n1 minus n0 there we go close that and we multiply all of this um, we multiply all of this by our class width. I believe I may have 1%. There we go, that's the way. I'm sorry, I put 1% parenthesis too much there. And we get a manually calculated quartile of 14.19. If you use the command called quartile, which is available in Excel, and select a raw data set of, uh, of material, and select the first quartile there, we get 15, and notice now that this 15 is without decimal points. So that's something to be suspicious about. What is happening here? Well, what Excel is doing is it's taking all of our observations here. It's sorting them from smallest to largest. It finds, um, it goes 25% into our uh, material, i.e. our quartile. It chooses the observation there, and then it rounds up. So it gets a, a rounded up X value, which is interestingly enough, you know, not as precise as we could be if we were calculating our quartile here for our raw data. Um, on the other hand, this manually calculated quartile is going to be less precise than the data we have here because we're, we're using a frequency table. And in a frequency table, all of these eight accumulated uh, frequencies are going to get uh, the same value. They're going to get the class middle value which is less precise than when they have their individual values in the raw data set. So this is something you might have to think about. Both of these are kind of imprecise, but you know it all depends on what you want to do. Um, so be careful when you're using these kind of things. And it's very good to know that you know the commands in Excel are not always like exact. So it's sometimes good to do stuff manually. Uh, we're moving on to the second quartile, which is 50% into our material. And notice also that this is the median because we're 50% into our material. So the median and the percentiles and the quartiles are related. Uh, we just get right into it and start calculating. Uh, we fill in this, these things in our calculation square, looking for the 50th percentile. 
our n is going to be the same. I'm just going to write 25 there. And we look back at our frequency table when we go 32%. Oops, sorry about that. 32% and then 60%. So our 50th percentile, i.e. our second quartile, is going to be located in this class. Now what is the lower class limit for that? Yeah, well, it's 15.5. So we write 15.5. What is our n0? Well, it's a number of uh, frequencies up to this class, so that is 8, as we look in the cumulative frequency column. What is n1? Yeah, it's the cumulative frequency up to and including our class, so we're up to 15 here. What is our class width? Well, it's going to be the same, but we can calculate it anyway, just to be sure. Uh, we go 21.5 minus 15.5, and we get 6. And we know this because when we built this frequency table in an earlier tutorial, we set the classes to equal width. But this is not always the case, I'm warning you. So that could be good to know. Uh, we now have everything we need to calculate the formula. So we go is equal to x0 plus loads of parentheses. We go p multiply by n, divide that by 100, close the parentheses, minus our n0. Yeah, and so we divide this by parentheses n1 minus n0. And finally, we multiply it by the class width. And we get 19.36. If we use the command, selected our data, and put in the second quartile there, we will get 19 as well. But this 19 is rounded up, so it's, it's not as precise. Although you could say it's more precise since we're working on frequency tables. Um, I encourage you to play around with this some more. Uh, calculate the third uh, uh, quartile. I'm not going to do it for you right now because, well, you've seen how we can do it. Um, and I hope you enjoy uh, ex uh, you know, exploring different aspects of this uh, formula with percentiles. And I hope you have a good day and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.